How good is it to be in church this morning? It's a bit quieter now. I'm like, oh, I've had a battle with my son the last like 45 minutes. And, but I do love being a dad. Today I want to talk about rest. Anyone need a bit of rest this morning? Yeah, a couple of hands up. And a couple of nods and moans. Um, but I think mums have practical superpowers. Would you agree? Practical superpowers. Powers, and I think the older I get, I just real, I just all these mums and people, women in my life, I just realize they have practical superpowers. I want to tell you about um, just yesterday. Um, my parents was over, so Laura and I went to the shops at Audi together, and we only had half an hour because my dad had to go and buy some chooks because he doesn't have enough chooks. He's got forty-four chooks. He needs another sixteen chooks, so he's up to sixty chooks. So the poor guy, the poor mum's going to be driving home with two dogs and uh, sixteen chooks in his car on his way home today. So anyway, but never mind about that. It's not, it's not a sore point for my mum at all. But anyway, I'm just making mention of it. Just imagine. So anyway, so we had, Lauren goes, we had half an hour. And normally when you've got young kids, you never shop, at the, do groceries together, do you? So for like 12 years, I, don't, I can't remember the last time we did groceries together. And she goes, um, so we need half an hour. We've got people over. We need to buy some groceries and all this. She goes, half an hour. And my dad goes, I need to go in half an hour. And Lauren goes, oh, I'll only take half an hour. I said, babe, it'll take more than half an hour. She goes, Mark. Trust me, I know how to shop. It'll take half an hour. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's do this. And so we went to the shops, and I was just in admiration. Lauren was walking. She was like a BMW speed car, just going this, boom. She knew where everything was. Oh, I'm on the plastics. You know, so Lauren, we can't get the cucumbers because they're $2 cheaper in uh, the cucumbers if you buy them singular. And I'm trying to, you know, plastic, trying to get the top of the plastic open to put them in there. And I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going very good. And we get there, and then... She was amazing. You know when you get to Audi and the, the, guy, the guy or girl, they scan the thing and they got this and you're like, uh, uh. so I eventually just throw them all in and they stand the next 15 minutes, pack it in. Lauren had it all prepared. She had the cold. She had the, and then the, 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 the fragile things at the end and she had it. And then she had the bags all ready to go. She was so fast that the, she was waiting for the guy to scan the products. <laughs> I was just like, I just sat back and I was like, Lauren has a superpower. She's a super practical superpower. And then, this is a true story. About a week ago, it's like 5.30 or so, and, um, and I'm still working back late. Lauren goes, oh, can you just go to the shops for me on the way home? I said, you know, I'm literally out the door. She goes, all I need is some bread and milk at Audi on the way home. I said, yeah, no worries. 45 minutes later, quarter past six, I'm there. And she goes, what took you so long? And, she, and, and I said, oh, well, I had a shopping, I had a, I had a, I had a fishing rod. I bought a ship fishing rod. They were on sale. That was a bargain. <laughs> I couldn't go past the fishing rod. I bought, I bought some bread. That's right. I remember the bread. And she goes, where's the milk? And I said, still at Audi. <laughs> <laughs> but the more I learn about mums, they are, have practical superpowers. And there's three things about mums. I'll tell you this. Mothers can multitask. Yep, yeah, that's right. Mothers are smart. Yeah, uh, yeah all the mothers are, yep. Yeah. And mothers long for rest. Would you agree? They long for rest. Yes, yes. And you know what? I realize that m- mums are so smart. And they've been doing this for generations, I hear. For generations. On Mother's Day, on Mother's Day, we've been taught from an early age, you make mum rest. Don't wake her up. Let her have a sleep in. You make sure you give her gifts that are relaxing things, facials, bath bombs. You make sure you give them a, a, a massage or time out. We, we're not going to have, we're not, we're not cooking dinner here because we don't want to have to do the dishes. We want mum to rest. We're going out for dinner. You know, it's all about mum resting, but they're so smart on Father's Day. They do the complete reverse. And they say, oh, go and spend time. Let's, let's organize some time with the kids and dad and they can spend quality time together. Let's organize an event and they can go out and spend. I'm thinking, I said two years to Lauren. I said, Lauren, I know what you girls are on to. I know what you mothers are on to. You get two days of rest a year. <laughs> They're so smart. Two days of rest a year, it's not much. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I did make it. Two days of rest a year. I was just saying, but I can tell you this. And for all the, 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 the men in the room, I want you to listen to this. Listen to this. I'm going to ask the mums in the room, what would you love to do or not do in order to rest? Okay, now don't yell it all at once so that I can't take notes. What would you love to do or not do in order to rest? Okay, you, you, okay what? 
not do the bedtime routine. Okay, yeah, it's hard, yep. Yeah. What else? Do everything. Okay, okay, Lauren, just the whole household, yep. Oh, the washing, the pegging, yeah, yeah, that's right. I did my first ironing basket for probably four years the other day, so should be chuffed, but yeah, not really. She's been doing it all the time. What else? What else? I'm not getting any brownie points here. What else? Oh, the bathrooms. So annoying, aren't they? At the back, at the back there. You have three sons, you don't want to go to the bathroom? Yes, at the back? Oh, not break a washing machine. Okay. I've got a good washer, washer machine down here. No, it's a joke. It's a joke. Okay. Okay, move on. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on. Come on. Help me out here. Don't leave that hanging. Okay. No, no, no. She's a good job. What else? Yep. Think about what to cook. Oh, yes. Taco Tuesdays. Just to lock that in. Yep. Groceries. Yep. Audi's awesome. 45 minutes and you can buy three products. Yep. I, you enjoy doing that. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, nice, nice. What else? Do or not do? Come on, you got to help us out a little bit here. What was that? Arguments. You know, parents, kids fighting. Oh, there's nothing worse. What else? Anything else? Do or not No routine, yes. Making lunches. I'm talking on behalf of Lauren here. Um, what else? Oh, when your kids want to be there. Oh, isn't that, look at these boys. Oh, they good boys. They definitely want to be at church this morning, don't they? Yeah. But I can tell you this. I believe there's a pandemic on rest. On actual inner rest, not just mums, I think everyone at the moment is longing for deep inner rest. And I'm talking mentally, physically, spiritually. People are longing for rest and it will not cut it with a holiday. It will not cut it. You know, there's um, so many relaxation centres opening at the moment because people just want to just I just need to get out of this I need to get out of this treadmill I need to get into some sort of space I've been talking to school counselors recently for a number of reasons but in particular they're saying their biggest issue at the moment they can't get kids back to school because kids are full of anxiety and worry and fear and all these concerns and they can't get kids back to school they need to actually rest and switch off you know we've got people leaving jobs like there's no tomorrow people on stress leave like ever than, than ever before there's a crisis happening, and I think people are longing and looking for deep inner rest, not just a holiday and not just a bit of time off every now and then, but longing for deep inner rest. And I believe that the Bible and living its principles can help us live a lifestyle of rest, not just a moment of rest. Are you with me? And this particular passage that was read out today, it's actually my verse for the year. So I, I suppose I'm preaching today, teaching today, but I'm trying to learn this, my, my very self. And it says um, in the book of Jeremiah, and you're thinking, why on earth would I choose the book of Jeremiah to actually learn about rest? Because in the book of Jeremiah, there are fundamental principles that we can learn about acquiring and living a life of rest. And the book of Jeremiah, just a quick little summary, book of Jeremiah is written by the prophet Jeremiah and they called him the weeping prophet. And they, they call him the weeping prophet because the Israelites had turned away from God, they're worshipping all these other gods, doing everything that they shouldn't do. And basically, sadly, the book of Jeremiah is a book of the Israelites, God's chosen people, going to absolute destruction because they're disobedience to God. And you're like, oh, okay, good Mother's Day. But I can tell you that there are some fundamental principles that we can learn from Jeremiah, and in particular this passage that we just chose. And, it, um, and I'll, I just want to break a couple of the verses down. It says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and those 
whose heart turns away from the Lord, that person will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the, in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. So basically, cursed is that person who trusts in other people or other things other than God himself and who, who trusts in man. A couple of key points out of this. This is two points. If you want to learn about rest, be careful who you trust. Be careful who you trust. Who tr- um, cursed is the man. Trusting in the wrong thing leads to destruction and unrest in your mind, life, and spirit. It's a curse. When you trust in the wrong thing, when you invest in the wrong thing, when you put your attention in the wrong thing and your focus in the wrong thing, it leads to desert places. And you do not find rest when you trust in the wrong things. What you put, you give your mind to, and information that you receive, you're allowed to, you're allowed to speak in your life. But then it goes on to verse 7 and 8, and this is my verse of the year, these, my passage for the year. It says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries. Oh, no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. In a rest comes from living in places like that. Living stream. Inner rest comes from living in places like that. And the point that I'm trying to make about rest, some three principles about rest. Inner rest is linked to who you trust. Think about that. Inner rest is linked to who you trust. And if you look at it in a human form, you have a great trusting relationship with your spouse, it can be a beautiful time. And when that trust is lacking or being betrayed, it is one of the most desert places time if you've got a work colleague that you feel like you can trust and they're not trying to backstab you or undermine you but just or a team that you just love and they're fantastic there's nothing more blessed to be part of a loving team and there's nothing more barren than being part of a team when you can't trust anyone no one has your back you understand and that's a key principle inner rest is linked to who you trust and trusting God brings in arrest. This is the second point. Trusting God brings in arrest. This is very simple, but I can tell you it's quite profound. Trusting God brings in arrest. It says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from him. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Trusting God brings inner rest. And I think that society in general around the world, we lack deep inner rest because we lack trusting God. And when we let God be God and let him do what he does and we play our part, there's a beautiful peace that transcends all understanding that comes upon us. And this is not to say that we don't pursue dreams, have goals, work hard, but we can live a lifestyle of rest. And this is my last, this third point. Rest doesn't have to be a one-off event. It can be a lifestyle. Rest doesn't have to be a one-off event. It can be a lifestyle. And we can still pursue, we can still work hard, we can still have goals, we can still have dreams, we can still have visions, we can still do what we're passionate about, but we can live in a place of rest, deep inner rest and more fulfillment than we've ever had. And those moments in my life when I think, you know, I can remember going through the situation with Andrew Chan leading the church and I had some health issues and things like this, and I was, but you know what? At that moment, I think I, I trusted, I held on to God more than ever before. I would say it was probably one of the most peaceful places I've ever been. I can't, ridiculous to say that, but that's what when the moments that I trusted God the most were probably the moments that I felt the lightest, even though I had the most on me. Does, does that make sense? Because the Holy Spirit is the giver of rest. 
the Holy Spirit is the giver of rest. And he wants to give this world the true rest, the inner rest, the deep spiritual, physical, mental rest that they are longing for from trusting Jesus and him alone. Do you want some of that? Want some of that? We're going to have an opportunity in a second to have a quiet time. And um, I'm going to talk you, talk you through that in a second. But I just want to share you one quick story. Um, Laura and I have been over the years to hundreds of camps, all sorts of camps. And often we've been invited to come and share and open the Word and do some teaching. Um, and we've done that. And I, we have diligently, when we have an opportunity, just like today or any other day, I will be diligent and spend time preparing, going, God, what is it that you want to say? What is it that you, um, passage that you want to share? What theme are we looking for? And I'm thinking, okay, God, I genuinely want to be your messenger here. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to play my part, trust you to do the other part. And at these camps, we have spent, I was thinking, hundreds and hundreds of hours seeking God. What is it that you want us to share to the young people? Often we get a list of all the young people that are coming, and so we can pray over them and think about what is that. And so we invest time in this. And then we would share, we'd run sort of groups and, and interactive things to try and engage people in their faith. And our dream and hope that people would just be drawn closer to God. That would be our ultimate theme. But each weekend, we would give a space for an hour, hour and a half. And we would say, we would just give one-on-one -on -one time with God. We'd go out, go sit on a park bench somewhere, go and sit somewhere by yourself. We might give them a couple of questions or a couple of readings that they could read. And at the end of the weekend, everyone would come back and would say, what was your highlight? What did God reveal to you? What was the best part of the weekend? Without doubt, hands down, every single time, it was the one-on-one -on -one time, the quiet time with Creator God, with the Holy Spirit that did the best work. And often, sometimes I'm frustrated I spent hundred. We spent hours and hours on this, trying to focus. Come on, what are they going to learn? Whatever. And then they, it's quite time. So they could do this. They don't even need us. And sometimes, as a minister, as a pastor, I feel like a fraud. I, I was thinking, if everyone in the church just started partnering and trusting with God and spending one-on-one -on -one time with the Holy Spirit, allowing Him to speak and being obedient to the voice of God and doing what He's called us to do, I'd have no job. I'd just be like, "Great job, guys!" I'd be like a motivator bunny, just going, "Come on, keep it going, keep it going," because the Holy Spirit. I tell you this. The Holy Spirit will do more in minutes than what I can do in a lifetime of preaching and teaching. The Holy Spirit will do more in minutes than what we can acquire through a lifelong search of the Bible and, and, hearing, and pr hearing people preach the Word of God. And I'm all for teaching. I'm all for preaching. I think we need to continue to do this. But the Holy Spirit is the ultimate rest giver. He comes to you as you are. He gives you what you need wherever you are. You with me? And I think people aren't coming to church because they want to hear, sometimes want to hear a sermon or going to hear the announcements or going to go through this process. I think people are just longing just to sit and just have an encounter with the creator God. Would you agree? And I'm thinking, if we can create spaces where Creator God does His thing and we are actually present, I think the world, I think our lives are going to be so richer for it. You want to do that this morning? We've got time. I want everyone, everyone to close your eyes. Why don't you close your eyes, find a relaxing pose, I suppose. Close your eyes, and I want you to find your resting place in your mind. Find your resting place. The place where you find, like if it was probably Rob Archie, he'd probably be in the back on his board, out in the waves. For you, it could be on a bench overlooking the ocean. could be sitting in your chair at home, reading a book. That's probably Lynn. <laughs> but find your resting place. And just breathe in and breathe out. Just find a place of rest right now in your mind. To get all the, all the to-do lists, if they come in your mind, just try and push them away. But just right now, just find your resting place.
And right now, still with your eyes closed, invite Jesus into that space. Invite Jesus into that space, that chair, that walk in the water. Invite Jesus into that place. And, And just be still. And, you know, those moments where you're just loving being in someone's presence, you know, like he's a young kid, sometimes just loves to be in the presence of their parents. Just enjoy being in Jesus' presence. Just sit there with Jesus. Keep breathing. How beautiful is Jesus? How amazing is Jesus? How life-giving is Jesus? And he absolutely loves you. Just keep being in his presence. Now, right now, Jesus is there, and you're going to have a conversation with Jesus. Keep your eyes closed. I want you to tell Jesus everything in your life that you are grateful and thankful for. I want you to look in Jesus and say, Jesus, I am thankful for, I am grateful for, I am blessed because... And you just start telling Jesus what you are thankful for. I'm thankful for my family. I'm thankful for my spouse. I'm thankful for your provision. Just everything, absolutely everything that you're thankful to Jesus for. Every little thing, every big thing that you are thankful to Jesus for. couple more questions. Right now with Jesus in your relaxing place, your time with him, you're talking to Jesus, you've thanked him. Right now, ask Jesus to help you with, and you fill in the blank. Jesus, can you help me with? Jesus, can you help me with my mental health? God, can you help me with this, this situation, this relationship? God, can you help me increase my confidence? Can you repair my insecurity? 
Jesus, can you help me be a more intentional parent? Whatever it is, fill in the blanks. Jesus, can you help me with? Still with your eyes closed, you're in that place of rest. You've invited Jesus into that space. You've told Jesus everything that you're thankful for and grateful for in your life. You've called on Jesus and you've invited him into spaces in your life that you want his help, his provision. And right now, you're going to be quiet and Jesus is going to say something to you. And you might just want to, in that sort of visual space, say, Jesus, what do you want to say to me? Because we know the character of God, we know that he will speak to you about a word of life over you. It'll, it'll, it'll lead to um, fullness. It will not be condemnation. But just sit down and let him speak words of life over you. Let him speak the things that he loves you and appreciates about you. The things that you do that no one sees, but he sees. And he's just right now, Jesus is just going to affirm you and encourage you and uplift you. Jesus, what do you want to say to me? I'm listening. And right now, I'm just going to pray. God, I thank you that you are a life-giving God. I thank you, Jesus, of the words of life and the moments that you've shared with us, that your Holy Spirit is the giver of rest, giver of life. And I pray today that you would cement those truths, that revelation 
I pray, God, that you would increase our trust in you, that we would be the people that would be obedient to you and to your calling, whatever the cost, whatever you ask, that we would trust you even in the discomforts of, oh, I'm not knowing, that we would be seen to be faithful in all things that you have given us. And I pray today that we would also take more time to sit at your feet, knowing that you will do more work as we sit at your feet than any other place. I pray right now, God, that you, or Holy Spirit, that is in us, that works through us, that we would be more sensitive to your Spirit. I pray, Jesus, that we would practice your presence more, that we would practice sitting at your feet. We would practice being still. We would practice listening to your voice as the one and true voice that gives inner rest. Jesus, we love you and we are thankful for you and who you are. And all God's people said, amen, amen. I'm going to give you the benediction this morning as we go away. And we're probably going to eat ourselves silly today, maybe. Mum, make sure the mums don't do any work or limited work. But I pray today as you go that you would know, you would absolutely know that God can be trusted and he's the giver of life. And that as a church family, we would, be, we would pursue to trust God in all things. Amen? Amen.